Knowing what technology will come out tomorrow is nearly impossible to figure out, but there are events throughout the world that help us to better understand what future technology will be shaping tomorrow. Thanks to our friends at Polaris Defense, we were able to catch a glimpse of what's to come, not just in the ATV world, but more specifically in the world of robotic autonomy. I was in Miami at the DARPA Robotics Challenge, or DRC, where specially funded teams came together to compete in a robotics challenge. You probably have heard of DARPA, but in the unlikely event that you have not, they are responsible for much of the technology we interact with today, being scaled down and brought into the consumer world. They're also the creators of what we now call the Internet and are a branch of the U.S. government that funds special research projects to help propel new technology, many times for military purposes, but also for other specific uses. Rich, from Polaris Defense, will tell us about Polaris and DARPA's relationship. Polaris got uh, involved with DARPA for two different reasons. Number one was their interest in hybrid technology in vehicles of our size, and we've done some work with DARPA over the last few years in that area and specifically in, for this uh, event was in unmanned ground vehicles. Polaris is the leader in ultralight mobility and therefore the leader in ultralight mobility with unmanned platforms. Polaris has a very new but successful history with the U.S. military and are now the leading suppliers of vehicles like the Ranger and the Sportsman. Polaris's history with the U.S. military began in 2005 uh, officially when Polaris Defense was formed. Prior to that we'd been uh, providing uh, commercial off-the-shelf technology to special forces operating in Afghanistan. In about 2005-2006 time frame, they came to us to ask us to militarize some of our commercial off-the-shelf technology. While their success with the U.S. military is very impressive on its own, Polaris has branched out much larger than what you might have expected. Polaris defense has uh, grown significantly since our inception in 2005 and really started on our, our recent growth trajectory around 2009. And since that time, we've uh, got vehicles active in 17 countries with 17 different militaries. A lot of them are special forces, but some are, are straight militaries. We're in all the U.S. military services, and certainly our allies, uh, Australia, Britain, Canada, uh, all have our, our vehicles both in the special forces and in the regular forces. My natural question to Rich, me being a gearhead and an enthusiast, is does this military technology make an impact for the consumer, and how is the trickle-down effect felt? Part of our charge as Polaris Defense is to commercialize technologies that um, are not in the consumer market today that we think may be in the future. And by using our, our expertise with the military and making, if you will, a more robust and, and perhaps expensive solution that the military is allowed to, to test and shake and break, we find out what um, the, the specific things are that the consumer market would like and we're able to refine it. The terrain armor tires that you see here, the non-pneumatic tires, were developed with the military in mind. As you can imagine, mission uh, critical type situations, flat tires are, are bad in, in many ways. And uh, so this, this um, product is a never flat. We've shot it with a 50 caliber, we've put a railroad spike through it, and we've run thousands of miles under those conditions. So it's not a run flat where you can get home, limping home at 10 miles an hour for over 30 miles. You can use the vehicle until the mission is over. Knowing that the technology truly does make its way down the line to the consumer, I was interested to ask Rich what he thought about the interaction between an autonomous robot and a Polaris Ranger, because that's precisely what we are here to see. Well, a, a robot interacting with a Polaris vehicle allows two things to happen. It allows Polaris, and our, and our desire to be the unmanned platform of choice, to look at how something like a robot would interact with our vehicle, which make absolute sense for human beings who we know how they move, what we don't know is how robots, humanoid robots, move, and we learned that here in the DARPA Challenge. The second part is we get exposure of the, of the uh, incredible utility of our vehicles. So this, again, this uh, DARPA Challenge is around disaster relief, and it is perhaps, uh, aside from the military, the most perfect fit for our off-road mobility and our technology like non-pneumatic tires. Well, at the DRC trials, I was expecting to see a barrage of lifelike robots that we're used to seeing in feature films. But the truth is, while many of them are extremely cool looking and very functional, they're a long ways from taking over the world. From climbing industrial scaffolding to walking through rubble piles and turning valves, the tasks the robots had to complete were not simple. 
Well, for the average human, they may be, but keep in mind, some of these robots were working entirely off their own electronic brains, making judgment calls and acting on what their programmers had taught them to do. While much of the trials were slow and at times painful, keep in mind these robots are receiving as much as 20 million points of reference per second through laser and radio vision, and the bottleneck of being able to process this information can be crippling. But eventually, they continue on their journey. One of the robots that shone throughout the entire competition was Shaft, a metallic blue design that was able to surprise everyone, competing in all of the events and being able to complete just about all of them with time to spare. Shaft moved very skillfully through many tasks, and at one in particular that was surprising to me was a process of picking up a rotary cutting tool, pressing the power button, cutting out a specific area of drywall, and then knocking out the cut drywall section Shaft did this with time to spare. Now that's pretty impressive. While all the tasks were equally diverse, the most interesting and the least attempted by all of the teams was the driving task, where the robot would actually have to drive a Polaris Ranger. One of the first to attempt the Ranger was Hubo, a two-legged, two-arm robot that stood roughly four feet tall. This small design easily fit within the XP's ROPS roll cage and was able to both steer and utilize the gas pedal. Just seeing a robot take off in the Ranger would be amazing. While Hubo only made it one third of the way down the course before succumbing to a broken neck servo, it was quite a sight to see it drive. During testing the previous day, it had completed the course, but unfortunately, when points were on the line, a mechanical failure would be its demise. After seeing Hubo stop due to a mechanical failure, we were pretty skeptical about anything else being able to attempt, much less finish this task. The second day of the trials, there was much more success in the Ranger, and seeing a robot inside a vehicle like this helped me to realize just how far we have come with robotics technology. These ain't no rock'em sock'em robots. These are incredibly smart, very mobile, and while they are in their infancy when it comes to speed and precision, I can only imagine what one, three, or five years down the road will look like. While on site, there was much more than just the DARPA Robotics Challenge happening. There was a full exposition put on by DARPA of the most recent electronic robotic technology, and there was demos going on all day long. The diversity in design behind these mostly military-focused companies we were able to speak with was amazing. From briefcase-sized robots that can jump onto the roof of a second-story building, to tracked single-arm bomb probing designs, there was so much to see and talk about from companies who sell automated 10-minute install side-by-side -side driving rigs to the designers of the eyes and brains of the robot. The technology was cool to look at, but we had hoped even cooler to see live in action. Part of the expo was multiple live demo areas, and to say that we were excited to see these robots go to work would be an understatement. Boston Dynamics was at the forefront of the demos and showed off robots you have most likely seen online from very small designs that were virtually unable to get stuck to the larger four-legged designs that really got the crowd excited. Cheetah is a high-speed four-legged design that while operated by a remote control, does still have to keep itself stable and upright at high speeds. It's loud and run by a 150cc methanol-powered go-kart engine that's capable of 55 horsepower. Seeing it in person was quite amazing. Of equally cool proportions was a significantly larger, four-legged, autonomous horse-like robot that will actually use a proximity sensor and follow the path of someone walking in front of it. Powered by a 550 Sportsman Polaris engine, this robot was impressive, but at the same time, scary to be close to, as the sheer size was significant. Tested to walk up mountains, over ice and snow, and take the impact of a side hit or force from an object, these large walking robots were something you'd only expect to see in a movie. While the technology is amazing, all are still loud and require fuel. And until the perfect battery that's incredibly energy rich and lightweight comes out, they probably won't be patrolling your neighborhood and forcing curfew. The DARPA Robotics Challenge was a very cool event for us to be able to be a part of. Not just seeing the Robotics Challenge and all of the cool expositions, but being able to see a company like Polaris and Polaris Defense interact with all of these different technologies. It helps us to understand why they can continue to put such robust technology into all of their vehicles. 
that benefit all of us as the consumer. If you enjoyed this video, post a comment and let us know what you think. Then click this link to subscribe and that link for more great videos from Dirt Tracks TV.